We're Outlet Baby Monitors, and we want to share the story of how this sock is bringing parents peace of mind. So our story starts with Tanner working in the hospital. He works with the technology pulse oximetry. You've all seen this. It's a little red light they put on your finger, monitors your vital signs. He found working with this day in, day out, that there was a pain with it that he had experienced, and that pain was the cord. He found that patients didn't like it. He found that nurses didn't like it. It got tangled up. It got in the way. So he assumed that other nurses would feel the same way. So he went ahead to, went ahead to test that assumption. He thought, what if we had a wireless pulse oximeter? We could have nurses use it, and we could sell it through the hospitals. So in validating that, he went out and talked with 58 nurses. He found a really good response rate. 93% said they wanted to see this over the existing technology. However, going back to the hospital, talking with administrators, he got a very different story. This was not a pain for them. It was about money, and it wasn't cost effective for them, and so they said no. So we learned a very valuable lesson. Your user is not always your customer. Even though we found a user that loved the idea and wanted to use it, they did not have purchasing power, and so going from the yellow, it goes back to red. It's unvalidated. So they're not our customer. We had to move on somewhere else. A little this, closer, sorry. sorry. Okay. This didn't cost a thing, and it only took about a week to validate. So we knew that we needed to pivot. Kurt Workman had experienced firsthand in his family the pain that comes from a child being lost to respiratory failure. And so he thought, what if we pivot, use the same technology in an in-home setting for infants, we can monitor vital signs, blood oxygen levels, heart rate, and report that to a parent, where if there's an emergency during the night, it will alert and alarm the parent, giving them peace of mind, knowing that they'll have that type of alert. He had found, in addition, that SIDS is the number one cause of infant death in the United States. It's often respiratory related, which increases parents' anxiety a lot. In addition, there's four million babies born in the US every year. And so with that size, we figured, and assumed that's a really big pain. I bet a lot of other parents feel this pain. So we went out to test that, that assumption. We started with our assumed, our assumed solution, which was putting the technology into a smart anklet, putting it on the baby. It wirelessly would send that information to a relay station, which was capable of alerting and alarming the parents if there was an emergency, as well as pushing the information onto a smartphone for convenience. So we completely pivoted from our original idea. We started focusing on, focusing on creating value in a new customer segment for parents in the home setting, helping bring them peace of mind. So we knew there was two types of risk we'd be facing in this. Market risk, will someone buy it? And technology risk, can we build it? We tackled market risk first because it was easier to get to and it was more important. We initially surveyed 105 mothers and we found that on average, they gave us an 8.5 out of 10 on wanting this product, thinking the technology was great. 96% said that they would use this technology. We got a lot of responses like, this is awesome, I want to buy one now. And take my money now and start selling it. We knew this was very early validation, but it at least pointed us in the right direction. We really validated this idea when we took the idea into a class project, for which we built a website, we made a video. The video in reality at the time was nothing more than just smoke and mirrors showing what the product could be or what it could do. We put it up on the website and it leaked out. We didn't intend for this, but it got picked up by 40 news agencies in 13 different countries. A lot of big names picked up this story. And because of that, we received over 500 emails in our inbox. Most of these were from parents begging for the product, saying, we, we want the peace of mind you provide. We're not sleeping well at night. We're willing to buy a prototype if that's all you have. And so from that, we feel we really validated that, yes, there is a pain here. These parents want the peace of mind that this can provide. In addition, we had 15 distributors around the world reach out to us. Among these, one from our major competitor said they're willing to drop that account, which brings them $2 million in revenue per year, to pick up our account. The second that's moving forward the fastest wants to do $50,000 in pre-sales to get this into their market the quickest. The great thing is all of that validation, it came from virtually building nothing at that point. And so we feel that indeed, yes, we did validate that there is a pain here and there is a customer that we can serve us. That only cost us $220 and took about two weeks to determine. So our next question was, how are we going to reach our customers? We initially thought through hospitals, but um, after talking with pediatricians and mothers, we realized that the best place to sell it would be in the retail location. When looking at how much it was going to cost us to make our product, we realized that um, at the end, the customers would have to be buying it at around $200. Our question was, are we really creating that much value? Um, so we or originally thought and assumed that we would have to rent the product. Our initial survey was pointing us in that exact same direction. Um, we got out of the building, went and talked to the people over at Babies R Us, and they told us there's a huge span of different products um, as far as price goes. And that um, the, most, the ones that were being purchased the most were in the $200 range. 
We didn't believe the lady when she told us this, so we called 33 other baby stores, and they told us actually the exact same thing. We were completely wrong. 71% of the baby monitors being purchased today are in the $200 to $200 or $250 price point. Um, and we learned that surveys can also lie if you don't word it correctly. We were asking, what would you expect to pay? But when we started asking, what's the maximum you would pay? That completely changed the results that we were getting. Um, we also A-B tested this on our website. People thought that they were purchasing the product when they clicked on the reserve button at different price points. This allowed us to find out what the elasticity of the demand was and find our demand curve and find that the profit maximizing price was at $299. Um, so we, in fact, were proved wrong, and luckily we will be able to sell the product. This cost us $30 and three weeks. Um, the next question was, could we build it? And that went right with uh, our next technology risk. The two factors that we needed to prove out was pulse oximetry and wireless transmission in this usage. We first did wireless transmission because it was easier. We built the proof of concept. It cost us $300 and uh, seven weeks, and it was able to do everything that we wanted it to, even though it looked kind of ugly. Um, after proving that, the next question was, can we create pulse oximetry specific for infants? Um, so we went back to the hospital. We interviewed the nurses. We watched how they were using uh, the product or the, the current pulse oximeters, and we realized that our design wasn't going to work. For technical reasons, we had to switch to a more sock-like design. Um, we tested that sock-like design with uh, over 120 hours of testing. We did it in 26 different homes and uh, seven overnight tests with parents. We were happy to see that with our new design, we could, in fact, build it. It cost us $500 in 12 weeks on working on that. Our next question, which unfortunately we didn't learn this until later in the game, was that we needed FDA clearance on this product. And the first person we talked to said it was going to cost us over a million dollars. Um, we had to figure this out. We talked to 16 professionals. We even talked to the labs that we need to work through. And we know it's going to cost us at maximum $200,000 in 13 months. We validated that, and uh, it only cost us $200 in three weeks. But at this point, this validation was really bittersweet. We said, man, is $200,000 in 13 months and all that liability really running lean before we can even get a product into a customer's hands? Could we not create something that would be more minimal and less risky and start with that in the, pro in the market? What was holding us up was the alarm. Alarm plus pulse oximetry means that you need an FDA clearance. We thought, well, what if we scratch the alarm? What could we do? Um, we said, well, we'd have the same product that you know, would still give you all these really cool things, and we could play with that data really in, in a lot of interesting ways. And maybe we could call it our infant health tracker. This was completely unvalidated, so we had to go back and revalidate whether or not this product with that slight tweak would be different. So we grabbed our clipboards and we headed out to a bunch of retail locations and uh, we interviewed 81 people in person. We gave them four pieces of paper and said, which one would you buy if you had to? Um, and they were, had to choose between our product and then the three other types of product that they can buy in those same price points. We were amazed when 20% of them said that they would choose our product. Um, and we also learned so much about our customer. It's not a one-size-fits-all customer. In fact, uh, we really kind of have a whole range of customers. On one side, we kind of have like our, our hippie-type mom that's a lot less worried about these types of things. And then you also have the, the moms that's on the opposite side of the spectrum. The ones that were less worried told us things like, and we kept hearing it over and over, I wouldn't want an alarm on this. This would drive me crazy. And it, it, it absolutely floored us, but we realized that our alarm version wouldn't even capture part of the market. And by starting with a, with a health tracker that they liked already, we'd be addressing a completely separate market, not cannibalizing our own sales, and uh, starting with something that was a lot less risky to begin with. Um, as for the parents who weren't worried, we would launch our next product a few months down the road after we'd learned from some risk and uh, avoided some risk with our first product. So that was validated, and we learned so much more about how our customer base is segmented out. Um, this cost us nothing, and it took about three weeks to do. Uh, moving forward, we still need to validate a few things. We need to validate whether or not there's a few other uh, uh, subscription-like revenue streams, and we also need to find key partners that are uh, in operations and have retail experience. We got all this done for just under or just over a thousand dollars and uh, 24 weeks, um, and we did a lot of validation and talked to a lot of people. Um, not just surveys, but over hundreds of people we one-on-one -on -one interviewed and, and tried to make fake sales with. Uh, we're really excited to be launching this summer with the, that, the, the non-alarm uh, health tracking version that doesn't need FDA and uh, to lower risk, and then eventually, seven months later, launch with our, our flagship product that we know will be a hit. You know, I wanted to add to that. So I'm a dad, and I can tell you firsthand, having kids is the most life-changing, amazing experience you can have. And at Outlet, we really hope to keep it that way. Thank you so much. I should let somebody else start this time. 
Steve, did you have any questions? Yeah, I, I'm just confused about the FDA approval. What class was the, was this a class one, two, or three device with the alarm? It's a class two device. And, and, um, and you're thinking how long does it take to get a 510K? Uh, for pulse oximetry, since it's so proven out, we've already contacted the labs that we would have to work with, and uh, it would be minimum eight months, maximum 13 months, and between 120 and $200,000. And why couldn't you get it uh, classified as a class one uh, device? Um, because it's sounding an alarm. So an alarm means that we are giving advice to parents. We are, con we are saying, hey, there's something going on here, whereas uh, when there's no alarm, um, that's not. So that's just kind of... Since pulse oximetry has been around, there's so many devices already out there, uh, predicate-wise. Um, that's just how it is. Just how it is. Um, and and uh, take me through the technology again. I missed the. Did you build it? Uh, yeah. After we'd already validated the the market, we did end up building uh, different prototypes to to first prove out different risks. Yeah. And so we went ahead and tested those various prototypes, oh, and we currently have uh, 100 samples coming back sometime in June from our manufacturer to start the FDA testing. Great. And what's the landed bill of materials of, uh, for, the, for the device? I'm sorry, the, the what bill of materials? Landed bill of materials? How right. much is it going to cost? So we're looking at about, about $49 that we can get that built and shipped to us, to our doorstep. And again, your list price is? Uh, we're thinking between 250 and $300. And your final channel? Uh, through retailers like Babies R Us, uh, Walmart, Target, retail locations. Just take me through What do you sell it to them at what, uh, what discount? Uh, so we would sell it to them for, what was the numbers again? So we can make it for $59. Microphone. We can make the product for $59, actually, including packaging and shipping. We'll sell it at a $120 price point. They'll sell it at a $249 price point. So it gives us a 51% margin, and it gives the retailer 104% markup. So we feel like those, those margin markups are, are uh, good, and we validated that with retailers in the space. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so when you're in this area, I mean, you were really testing the product itself very well, but channels is crucial without you know testing the channel and without having a brand you know, people are not going to put things from china on their baby's ankles very easily right so how much did you test the channel aspect what proof do you have there and did you get into testing the brand aspect because as soon as you're in consumer goods without brand it's difficult yeah so as far as re uh, the testing, we had to go over it really quickly, but um, we originally thought that we were going to have to sell it through hospitals. After talking to pediatricians, they said, you know, we can't like sell products for you. That's not really what we do. And we ran, a, and in our, one of our surveys, parents said, 88% of the parents said they expected to find it in retail. And so that was the location that people wanted to find it, um, and people expected to find it. Um, and that's how we validated that section. And what was the second half of your question? Was so what I'm interested in is what are the tests you've done with the channel? So you figured out what channel parents want. Did you mm -hmm. figure out if the channels want you? Um, <laughs> and well, what does it take? You know, who are the yeah. buyers in that channel? Yeah, so we didn't actually do any testing, but, test, but it has been validated. Because we, like he said, uh, we reached out to... Uh, to a distributor, um, and like he, when he heard about our product, he was going to drop uh, a, another brand called Snooza, which does $2 million in revenue to take on our product. Um, and then Newell Rubbermaid, who, launch, who runs the Rubbermaid products, um, Sharpie and Graco Baby and a couple other baby products, they also contacted us. I don't even know how they heard about us, but the <coughs> VP of product development, Todd, um, we've talked with him twice, and um, they've been hooking us up with the right distributors and, and how we would do it, and they also want to track us for an acquisition in the future. Just last, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the people you talk to are the people who have the, b the budget and who can make the decisions in the channels. Yes, um, the, we actually talked to the CEO of that first distributor and the other one, um, the exact same question, yeah. Great, so. sorry. Um, I, I wanna understand the test um, where you pivoted to the infant health tracker and you got a 20% result um, relative to some alternatives. Did all of those alternatives have monitors, excuse me, have alarms in them? No. No. Um, so the, the video, the monitors out right now are sound. Uh, there's one with 
movement, which does have an alarm, and then you have video. Um, we tested just, we tried to make, put it in their minds that they are in a store and having to choose like they will in the future between these four types of alarms So why were you, so you said you were surprised that 20% chose your product. The, 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 the sense I got was that there were significant <laughs> features missing from your product that were um, available in the, the other three that you tested. Just the alarm, and in all honesty, maybe it's, it's, it's kind of like why people hate to start with their crappy product first. Like to us, it was so ugly, and we didn't even want to like test it. And the fact that people were wanting it, like we fought in the office a lot about whether or not to even go test or even try this non-alarm version, yep. because it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't our flagship product, and it wasn't what we were excited about. Um, so that's why we were so surprised. Yeah, and so your explanation for the 20% is, is, is an interesting psychological phenomenon. I, I don't want that thing going off. I don't want an alarm, yeah. Have you thought of, that seems to me like a hard thing to actually market. So if I walk into a big box retailer mm -hmm. and, and I'm just faced with a bunch of products on a shelf, I mean, is the marketing message on your box going to say you won't be bothered by an alarm? I mean, how, mm -hmm. how, I see, how, yeah. are you gonna, how are you going to market and sell this thing? So Forbes said that this is the year of the quantified self. I mean, we've got Nike Fuel Band, Fitbit, a million things to track everything that we're doing in our daily lives. So this is an infant version of that. It's, it's a completely different um, segment of the market. It's a different interest, but it's more minimal. It's more lean. It's something we can launch this summer. And, and we can boil out a lot of technical risk as well with that product and really understand more how the product's going to work. So, yeah, it's, it's not going to be marketed as, hey, we've got the same product but without an alarm. It's, it's really a, a health trend thing, which is different. Good. Thank you. And you're using this health monitoring product as a bridge to... 13 months later when you can get your class two device and launch the product with the alarm, is that correct? That, yeah. That's right. Yeah, uh -huh. we'll start with this. Um, this actually June we'll be getting the samples and uh, seven months later we'll launch with our flagship product and this is kind of a, an outline of that. We'll still do a little bit of FDA testing, accuracy testing, but it's the cheap side. It's only 21,000 to make sure that our health tracker is accurate. So, sorry. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, great job. Thank you very much. Thank you.